We have a couple more to show you, just to show you some variations over here. So this is our second uh, ta'weed that we're having a look at. Uh, this is the one that I opened. And this one you can see is in a different format. Uh, it has some things that have been stamped on with soluble ink, like a stamp. And then it has some writing that has been done below. So let's again ask ourselves how much of this is from the Quran. So again, we said we established the principle that the only difference of opinion with regard to ta'weed are those which are from the Quran. So what we can do is we can say if there is anything from the Quran in here, it's going to be in this block or this block. Here we have some random letters placed inside of squares. We have uh, some more letters placed inside of squares. We have some more seals. We have some more numbers. We have some scribbles and we have some symbols. And here we have some slightly different symbols, uh, which uh, I will explain the meaning of in a moment, inshallah. We have some strange squiggles. None of this, we can certainly say that 60% of this ta'weed is absolutely not from the Quran in any way whatsoever. And if there were to be anything from the Quran, it would be in this. The problem is that it's mostly illegible. It says, أعوذ بكلمات الله التامة من شري And then you can't read what it says. And then it says, يا كريم at some point. And then يا رزاق So again, it's not from the Quran. There are some of the names of Allah there. But there are lots of places where you can't read what it says. Could say anything. Uh, in this other one here that we have, we have uh, the word Qadr, we have the word Aqul. Um, other than that, uh, it's very, very, very hard to read what it says. Uh, but it appears to be words that don't make any sense in Arabic. Some of the words make sense to me in Arabic. Uh, we have Min Allah. But in between, there are some words that don't appear to make any sense. Qiham or Qaham, Yaqush, Jim Malish. These are words that don't appear to make any sense in Arabic at all. We don't know what language they are in. Uh, they may be in only the language of the Shayateen. In any case, we'll let them off and we'll say that perhaps part of this is from the Quran, it's illegible, part of this is from the Dua. So then let's move on to see what is in the boxes. In the boxes is well known what is written here. What is written is Batat Zahaj Wah. And I know this because this is a three by three uh, square. There are three squares by three, it makes nine. And it's one of, in fact, it's the most famous of the magician's symbols that are used to attack uh, and to destroy and to ruin people's lives. Batat is one of the names of the shaitan. Zahaj is one of the names of the shaitan and Wah is one of the names of the shaitan. Uh, and here are the numeric symbols which add up to Batad Zahajwa. It adds up to 15 on all sides, 15 across and 15 down. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. And it spells the name of three of the shayateen. Uh, here is written what is most likely the word Iblis, but it's hard to read and confirm. It might not be, but usually when they write it like this, it's usually the word Iblis. Uh, but in case we can't read it, it might not be the word Iblis. We can let them off on that. Uh, what we can be absolutely sure of is the following here. So there are some symbols that look like three alifs together and a ta and a ha. Uh, these symbols here refer to the worship of the stars. It's Babylonian magic. Uh, and it refers to worshipping Lahtatil, Qahtatil, Hattatil, Hathatil, and these various shayateen. And basically they have symbols. And you can see the symbols very, very clearly on this paper here. Their symbols are written one after the other after the other in a symbolic language, which is like hieroglyphics. It's not Arabic, but each of the symbols is well documented in the books of magic. And each one of them refers to one of the seven stars or the seven constellations of Babylon. Then you have again uh, written in here uh, some strange uh, symbols. Some of them are the stars of Babylon. And it may well have some of Allah's names in there, although it's not entirely clear. Huwa, Huwa, it seems to be written there. If that is Huwa, Huwa, it's very hard to read. Or Mah, Mah, it could be also. Uh, and here is written, 
یا کالویم کالویم That's a very strange word to use. There's a, a cross in the middle. Uh, again, something Muslims don't use. And this is written in the shape of a magician's symbol. Uh, then we have huwa razzaq So that is something relating to Allah. And then some random words, random symbols. Hathatils, uh, qahtatil, all names of shaitan. And then some other things are written there. Hat, 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 hat is written there, which clearly you've never seen in the Quran. Uh, and then huwa, huwa, huwa. is written at the end. These are nothing more than just a paper that is full of the names of shaitan. From beginning to end, it's full of the names of shaitan. Only this top part here could be potentially something from the Quran. It's very, very hard to read. It appears that this one is a'udhu bi kalimatillahi tamma, which makes sense. But it appears that this one is written in a language other than Arabic with some Arabic words squeezed in there. Khwani, these are given to people who Arabic is not their first language. Let's be honest. They're given to people usually from the Indian subcontinent who Arabic is not their first language. So they see something that looks like it's written in Arabic. They see huwa razzaq and they think, you know, that's in Arabic. I know that from the Quran. Few words, a'udhu bi kalimatillahi tamma. So they think this is from the Quran. And then when they look at it, when you look at it and read it, anyone who speaks Arabic fluently can see immediately that it's full of the names of shaitan. full of the names of shaitan. Names shaitan, one, two, three names of shaitan, four names of shaitan, five names of shaitan, six, seven, eight, nine, ten names of the shaitan, just on this paper, just from what I can see, and I haven't even started interpreting it yet in terms of what else is on there. You can't carry a paper with ten of the names of shaitan around your neck. That is not going to bring you any good. That is not going to bring you any barakah. And look at how they disgrace the names of Allah. Look at how they write Allah's name And then they write the names of the shaitan below it. And they seek help. And look at the random words. Look, crosses. You know, subhanAllah, the basic concept, Muslims don't write crosses. You know, we, subhanAllah, from the most basic things. And there's a, a cross there. There are some uh, words in here. Hat, 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 all of these different strange words that only the shayateen understand what they mean. Here, da, 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 da. And then some other words, and then huwa, huwa, sattaw, khiyar, like bits, random words, one word of Arabic, three words of gibberish. And as you can see, this is not from the Quran. This is not what is narrated from Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, radiyallahu anhuma, if indeed it is authentic and there is some weakness in it. And likewise, you know, all of these other things that are written here, none of this is from the Quran, ya ikhwani. This is nothing but the names of the shaitan, random words that are understood by the shaitan and symbols and letters. And again, we can cover these, um, uh, these uh, boxes of three by three. These are based upon, again, uh, Persian magic, which is uh, Zarkash Kawayan, which is uh, a 10 by 10 square with letters and symbols that are written in, in order to worship the shaitan and to seek help from the shaitan at certain times. And a person was given this, wallah, he wasn't given it by a Hindu. He wasn't given it by a Sikh. He wasn't given it by a Christian. The brother who was given this was given it by somebody who appeared to be a Muslim, who appeared to be a holy man, a pious man, a wali from the awliya of Allah, an imam of the masjid or an imam of the whatever he was. This is the man who gave him this. These people will not come to you with horns. They will not come to you and say, I am from Iblis. They will come to you and say, Salamu alaykum, my name is Muhammad, look at my beard. And I will give you something that will heal you. Say, Alhamdulillah, I have something that will heal me. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yawmiddin. And qul huwa Allahu ahad, and qul a'udhu bi Rabbil Falaq, and qul a'udhu bi Rabbil Nas. And the simple question you say to them is, Okay, if this paper is so blessed to heal me, let me print out Ayatul Kursi from the Qur'an, Print a page from Quran.com and fold it and tie it on my neck. What do you say? He will say it has no benefit. He will say, MashaAllah. Ayatul Kursi has no benefit, but your random qatta ta 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 has a benefit. This is nothing but worship of the shaitan, ya ikhwan. Worship of the shaitan that takes a person outside of Islam. How about the miskeen person who hangs this around their neck? The miskeen person who hangs this in their home, in their office seeking barakah? And it's bringing them nothing but loss and destruction day after day after day. And we haven't even, you know, gone into it. If you study these in some detail, 
you can find even more names of shaitan in them, even more twisted words, even more evil in them. This is just looking at them from the outside, you can see. And you know the people's names are written on them. I think on the back of this one, the person's name was written on it. And what an evil, evil thing to happen to you. We ask Allah to keep you safe and we remind all of you, if you have any ta'weez, any symbol, any writing, any strange boxes, any ayah of Qur'an that finishes with random letters or strange boxes that you can't understand, get rid of it. Go and take it and dispose of it in a proper way that is respectful to the ayat of Allah that are written there, but is going to remove this evil and this torture and this torment that will come upon you if you were to keep it with you. Because if you were to keep these with you, Ma aflahta abada, you would never ever be successful, you would never ever have any success in your life in this dunya or in the akhirah. So this is an encouragement. We again will post some links on how to destroy them, and we'll also post some links to a project which exists to educate people about the evil of these things and some videos there as well, inshaAllah ta'ala. So we'll post the links to that along with this video, bi idnillah. So we ask Allah to keep you all safe. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and to protect you with his protection. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us what benefits us and to benefit us with what he teaches us and to guide us to the best of this world and the next. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.